thank you all for coming today. I just wanted to take a quick second to recognize our Grand Master Program in general. Um, like Chris mentioned, we have over 700 Grand Ambassadors now in all different parts of the world, from 30 different countries, six out of seven continents. Um, we have a really, really unique program, and I think that's part of what makes um, our Grand Ambassador program so special. We have people that are musicians, entrepreneurs, inventors, uh, you name it, we've got it in the ambassador program and, and we couldn't be more proud of that. So thank you guys for being here today. I know a lot of you guys traveled like hundreds of miles to get here. Uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't appreciate your support throughout the Fully Charged Weekend more. So round of applause to you guys. introduce a very, very special guest you probably know and have recognized and seen. Um, our dear friend Sandy Monroe is here. We also have... <laughs> Sandy's going to say a few words. Um, and then we also have our friends from Alafe. Um, here we have, oh yeah, Luca at one. Also, we have Alafe here. They'll also be, Alafe will be joining us at our booth at Fully Charged. So if you have questions, they'll be there to you know, answer and to, to chat with, so we're really blessed to have them and very thankful for their support and their partnership here with us today, so thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> um, I, I, as I mentioned before, uh, I've had eight startups now. Um, you know, <laughs> some haven't always gone the best, uh, but some uh, have gone pretty good. Uh, but one thing that I've never had at any of my startups is really the sage wisdom <laughs> to not go down certain paths. Um, and I think when Steve uh, and I decided to restart at Terra, one of the first things we said is, we need to design this vehicle to be manufacturable from the start. Um, we don't want to design a really cool product and get thousands of people excited, like everyone here is excited, and then try to slam a vehicle into manufacture and then figure out a year from then, crap, we need to redesign this vehicle to be more manufacturable. So one of the first calls we made before we hired our first employee was to Sandy Monroe and we said, <laughs> and we said you are the best at this. You know how to build a factory for lean manufacturing and you know what kind of products should be in that factory to make the most of that product to have um, a quick build time, an efficient build time and decrease um, the cost of that product. Uh, he's done it for companies like, like Boeing and Maytag and Dodge and Ford, if they would ever listen to him, and other, <laughs> other big companies. But um, it's been amazing to have him and his team on board with us, literally from inception, to say, if you guys, are, if you guys can make a vehicle that has a body structure with only four parts, you are going to revolutionize transportation. If you guys can make this vehicle with simple build assemblies that you bring to a final assembly plant and just put them together, you will be masters of the supply chain. Um, and it's just been uh, great wisdom all along, every step of the way. Uh, and I can't be happier uh, to have Sandy here today uh, to celebrate the unveiling of our latest vehicle. So please welcome Sandy in the road. To well, uh, I'd like to first off uh, maybe echo the words. Um, I'm really, really happy to be here. I'm uh, also very happy to be associated with the latest and greatest of all the iconic vehicles that have come out. There's only a few that can be, can be identified by their name, the Model T. Nobody has to say Ford. The Beetle, nobody has to say uh, VW and the Mini. Nobody has to say BMW. And now we've got the Aptero. That is an iconic vehicle, and you all, I'm sure most of you have got money in this thing just like I do, you all are a part of a, uh, a revolution. It's the only word I can think of. A revolution that's probably gonna take the, uh, uh, the 20, 20 century, whatever you'd call that, the 20, First, yeah, 21st century, whatever century it is, I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> this is gonna, this is gonna really uh, uh, be the vehicle that everybody's gonna point at forever. 
It's got an iconic style. It's got an iconic, brand new iconic uh, 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 drive system, uh, solar system. Everything about it says that this is the car for our times. So I'm very happy to be here, and um, I uh, I hope you guys are really going to enjoy uh, the uh, the new reveal that you're about to see here. So anyway, thank you very much for coming and. Uh, Make sure you tell your friends to invest. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's amazing the progress we've made with uh, with Sandy's help, uh, and you know the culmination of three and a half uh, years of engineering and effort by our wonderful team here. Um, you know, from the MES system to the electrical engineers to the chassis and body engineers and, and aerodynamics and. Uh, thermal systems like it's it's all had to come together to present to you our latest iteration of our vehicle gamma we are um, excited uh, to show you our progress uh, and we hope you know that we're building on that progress um, we uh, we're going to drive gamma in here in a couple seconds but i hope you know that we penciled that design months and months ago um, and now we're almost done penciling the delta design and that will be our production intent vehicle, and we hope to show you that very, very soon. So uh, thank you for all your support to get to this tremendous milestone, and I present to you Gamma. As you can tell, we've uh, we poured a lot of heart and soul uh, into this design. Um, we, uh, we, we definitely uh, took it down to the line on actually building this vehicle, so I hope you know that a lot of people in this building worked very, very hard uh, to put all the finishing uh, notes on this vehicle, so a lot of you can come in uh, and see the first uh, on the wheel of Gamma. It, um, it's spectacular in many ways, uh, but it has changed significantly from uh, the Alphas that you see up there. Uh, if you've seen the aerodynamic simulation video online, um, the vehicle is actually longer by four inches. Um, so you actually get more storage in the tail. Um, the storage area in the back is actually lower by 50 millimeters too, so you get more depth in the storage in the rear. Uh, so when you go camping, uh, it should be uh, pretty amazing. And the rear hatch opens with a knock, which is super cool. Um, <laughs> um, we, uh, we know that you'll be very uh, excited uh, about this vehicle and making it part of your life. Uh, we would have um, a pretty cool charge plug in the back uh, that opens to see just a superior charge technology socket. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if any of you have, uh, have followed along there. But uh, did you want to share some notes on the interior design? Maybe, maybe I'll go through some more aerodynamic hits. Uh, because all of you have a nice view of the vehicle now. Um, the Aptera got longer by four inches, the nose got pointier and lower, um, and that was an exercise in the artificial intelligence um, simulation tools that we have telling us that that was the best way to lower the drag of the vehicle. So uh, thousands and thousands of iterations of computational fluid dynamics have been done on the Aptera, lowering the nose, making it more pointy, uh, paid huge benefits, uh, streamlining, the uh, suspension through here and the very unique shape of the wheel pants is all in an effort uh, to make things more streamlined and the compressed air that gets compressed between the wheel pants and the body is relieved by the back of the wheel pants and it works uh, just extraordinarily well. Um, if we can get our regulators to agree through your persistence, we can also possibly get rid of these very 
um, un-aerodynamic <laughs> uh, by size uh, side view mirrors, but we need help uh, from the regulators to, uh, to actually ditch those in favor of a superior digital vision system. But uh, it's just amazing how the vehicles come together, uh, and I'll let Jason say a few words about the amazing advances we've made in the interior, too. Chris, you're an amazing speaker. Thank you. Um, again, thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, I, think, I think the best way to do this is probably just point out some of the features. Um, you guys are very persistent in, in your pursuit of uh, knowing what's going on. But we've got the most efficient headlight in the smallest package possible. 4x less the energy with 150 de field, 150 degree field of optics. We've been in development for over a year on that. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Um, second of all, you might notice a windshield wiper there. We have a rear vision system. We have a working solar roof and a working solar IP made in-house from the production facility down the road. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for being so good to me. There he is. Thank you so much, team. Beautiful. Um, as you know, the ethos of Aptera is efficiency, and we went through so many iterations, and we try and get the most out of everything. And we're really grateful for all the work that you guys did on the, on the solar side, um, and they're, they're just getting started. Some of the other things, you know, we have turn signals, we have reflectors, we have um, reverse indicators, we have a license plate indicator, it is not a doorknob. Um, it is to illuminate the license plate. We do it to the legal requirements with one LED. One LED with a highly refined optic. Unheard of, super efficient. Um, we have our rear backup system. We're representing the EDA foam situation here, and we also have our working logos. We've got our airbags represented, and we also have our safety belts. Pedals, you might enjoy the pedals. There's a little story behind the pedals too that came from one of our best creative uh, composites guy, Marcelo. Currently these pedals are made from upcycled used skateboard decks, so they're made from Thank you, Russell. Um, I, I, want, I want you guys to understand, as, as you, of course you do, we've got alpha, beta, gamma, and gamma was, you know, represents about seven months ago, seven to six months ago, and then the execution over the past uh, months, and especially the past few weeks. Um, delta, as you might allude to with Chris and Sandy, delta is almost complete not hoping for the end of the year or near the end of the year. It's coming very quickly, and Delta is even better than this. So with that, Sarah, anything else? Okay. I think, uh, again, for the, uh, for the solar team, um, it's, uh, it's been in just the last couple days that we finally had a full solar package on a vehicle and have been out in the sun and have been charging our high-voltage battery pack. So uh, just an amazing accomplishment from Anuj te Anuj's team uh, and the solar charge team to get everything working. And it's just very cool to see, uh, see it represented here uh, in totality for the very first time. Uh, so uh, thanks again, guys. thanks. Actually, I do have one thing to point out. Um, some of you have been very keen on all the details and we ran into, you know, uh, in the creative and engineering process. And by the way, to me, Aptera represents the best of engineering inside and out. It's really a fantastic um, execution and exercise, and again, Delta's gonna be better, but, you know, where's the cup holder? Where's the armrest? Where's this and that? Has anybody figured out the HVAC system? Chris said it? Chris said it? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, we, were, we were holding back because we had to, we had to like, find I go on the game of brief overview, so tell okay. the whole story. We, we had to hold back and actually describing it because we were finally um, the area, the ring around the main screen is the vent. So the vent is the screen, the screen is the vent. And we match, the, uh, we actually see or require calculations of what the air should be in a cabin of a vehicle this, of this size. Um, we're going to be able to, or you're going to be able to control the air up, down, left, right. And there will be supplemental side vents. We also have defrost, side defrost, lower vents as well. So that might answer one of those questions. Yeah, the thermal team's done an amazing job. In a typical vehicle, you have to get rid of all that HVAC heat somewhere when you have your air conditioning on. 
Uh, but we just have our belly pan to, uh, to radiate the heat from the Aptera. So, um, you know, getting the, um, the air conditioning system right sized uh, for what we need and then being able to extract uh, all that heat on a hot summer day uh, to keep you cool inside the Aptera is an amazing feat. So, just another compliment to our amazing engineers for pushing the ball forward so we can get ready for production. Um, I know you guys uh, probably have some questions, lots of questions. Uh, we are happy to answer them. Do we have any time constraints yeah. now? Or? Um, no, we can. We have uh, 30 minutes for questions. And wow. So 30 minutes for questions, and uh, obviously after that, you can feel free to grab us individually. Um, all the ambassadors here, I have a special surprise for you. Uh, come to me personally. Uh, we printed out some um, some SLA uh, green Apteras for you to take home with you, uh, but we only have them for, for just the ambassadors that are here. Um, I was told 40. Um, so uh, we can actually show you where they were printed, which is kind of cool. Uh, we do a lot of our own prototyping here, uh, but it's really cool to see a little model that you can uh, take home with you. So uh, first questions. This is about engineering. But, uh, what do you know about the federal tax credit? Uh, the federal tax credit uh, that applies to no EV currently um, doesn't seem terribly useful uh, for anything right now. Um, but uh, we hope that uh, states like California who have uh, big goals, um, goals to have an all-electric vehicle uh, fleet in terms of sales at least by 2035, are really going to have to support companies like Aptera. Um, you know, Aptera is not only the most efficient vehicle in the world, but it's also the only vehicle that does not tax the grid for your transportation. You bring it home. You bring it home, you let it set in your driveway, you take it to work, you let it set in the parking lot, it creates its own energy. Um, you know, we're talking about shifting from petroleum to electrons. And if those electrons all have to be supplied by the grid, that's going to be a big, big challenge. This vehicle does not have to face that challenge. People can buy the Aptera today, they can take it home, they can live a lifestyle with zero fuel costs while doing the best thing for the environment possible. And we think that uh, hopefully the federal government and state governments all around will recognize that and support projects like ours. Hopefully all of you have heard we got a $22 million grant. <laughs> process and a competitive one and it's great uh, that they recognized um, you know how compelling our business model is but we're also chasing uh, further funds uh, from the federal government uh, and possibly more from the state um, so keep an eye out for that and uh, we may be asking for your support to lobby those people for um, you know comments uh, on different programs will the steering arms stay in the wind on Delta will the steering arm stay in the wind um, this little guy right here uh, is our steering arm. Um, it will exist in the wind, um, but our 3D printer broke down that was printing out the cover for that arm, <laughs> so it's not on there yet. Um, but it, it's, we actually had it very close to the lower control arm um, uh, in our last iterations, and we found through aerodynamic simulation that uh, no matter how refined we got it, no matter how close uh, we made the foils together, it was not as aerodynamic as just moving it to the middle of those two foils and leaving it be in its own aerodynamic airstream. So, uh, so we moved it up significantly, and it'll have an airfoil over it, so it'll look uh, really unique and cool. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, just to further that, I mean, aerodynamics is a little bit of a voodoo ma magic art, and sometimes your intuition is spot on. Uh, quite often, it needs to you have to reset your expectation. Um, in that case, exactly what Chris said: we've had it high, we've had it low, we've had it in the middle, and the middle gets us the best result. Um, and again, gamma represents that moment in development time. The delta wheel pan is refined, refined even further, especially with the CFD and the aerodynamic test. Yes, sir? You're using a Tesla charge port. Do you have to exchange any patents to Tesla in return for that? We are still <laughs> in negotiations <laughs> for the best charge socket that we can provide to you. Um, and we don't fully have that agreement paper yet, uh, but we do see a scenario where uh, we can use the charge socket of our choice and still have the freedom to grow our business and expand our territory.
That was about the most political answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Does Texas Congress advance child support funding around the slope? Is it open to the remote current? Can you tell us if and if so how much money is being budgeted? Oh, uh, that's a good question. So since the last crowdfunding closed, and since we just opened up a new crowdfunding, a new price is 10.50 a share. Uh, the old price was 9.20 a share. Uh, we had a little interim gap, and we filed a public statement that said we were going to raise a Series B round of funding. That Series B round of funding was really just to convert the early safes that we had. We have a, a crowdfunding through a platform called WeFunder, um, and those early people, if you were so lucky to buy shares in that early WeFunder round, congratulations, uh, because you bought in and 44 or 80 something cents, and because of a protection in the contract, your price actually dropped every time you raise money. So the final conversion price of that was like 29 cents and like 60 cents. So, um, you know, <laughs> very good game, and thank you. That is what has made this company possible is over 12,000 investors reaching into their own pockets, donating their, their money to the cause to buy into the future of, of transportation. And, uh, they gotten us a long way. But in the, in the interim, uh, that, that Series B was less than a million dollars. It was just to convert those early saves. Uh, and now we're raising new crowdfunding money, um, and it's, it's coming in very nicely. Um, and we're terribly appreciative of everybody that's been kind of patient and waiting for the round to open back up. And now are investing. And I think, uh, as Sandy said, um, invest. Tell your friends, invest. Um, if you want to sponsor a future uh, that's better for our children and grandchildren and uh, reduces our need for petroleum uh, and reduces our dependence on the electrical grid uh, that's inferior in most of the country, this is a solution. Um, and the way to help that solution uh, is by investing uh, in the future. So, so yeah. I have two questions. One, I can imagine that little last five inches under the tail to be a rudder if you need to do some kind of extra steering, if you have some mobility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, first question, uh, she asked about the potential rudder uh, in the rear of the Actera. Uh, that is an idea that has been contemplated by many engineers. We seem to hire new engineers, and that's one of the first questions that come up. Um, uh, there are other vehicles that have like air brakes in the back that are literally control surfaces that open up and help you brake. Um, everything about this vehicle is built for efficiency. Um, so uh, to add a mechanical system back there that did something like that would just add extra weight um, and complexity and, you know, uh, when we make a marine version of this, yeah. both <laughs> right. uh, but wow. no, no, um, no, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's, it's too complex and, and would add too much weight. Um, and your um, now I'm taking the second question, the first question, so I can take care of this. It's yeah. about the passenger side. Yes. And, and like, okay, so in, in Delta, we know the metric from the average passenger, and we have a, what's called a toll board. In that build, in that space is much more relative to where you're used to, right? Uh, we plan on embracing uh, aftermarket manufacturers in a unique way. So we don't think any other um, automobile uh, or EV company has. Um, we want to help people make really awesome accessories for the Actera. Um, and if that means giving them the cab for our footwell so they can make um, a little uh, brace for your feet to make you more comfortable, that means getting somebody to cab their seat uh, so they can make a, um, you know, a, a backrest so that they need more comfortable for long trips, or a tent that uh, you know has an awning that you know goes 15 feet out. Uh, we plan on really embracing people uh, that can help make really cool stuff to make your life at Altera that much better. Um, and you know, we think that's just the way to do it. We took a modular approach on, on a lot of it from, from the design and accessory and user side, but also the manufacturing side. So you're not locked into uh, seven years of the same thing. Um, you notice that headrests appear to be separate in the seat. That's so you can tune it. Yeah, the, um, the thought of a life with this vehicle is just a different way to think about vehicle ownership. Think about giving this to your children, your grandchildren. It's just a different way to think about vehicle ownership. 
being able to upgrade your center infotainment display as we get to 60 or 10 g or whatever the hell next comes next. Uh, the thought of being able to upgrade your interior with aftermarket accessories. Uh, the thought of being able to change the color of your vehicle every few years just because you want red instead of the blue you had last year uh, is a really cool feature with the Aptera. The great thing about having a composite body is the Aptera is not going to rust away. Um, there's no reason why these vehicles can't be on the road in 50 years, and we plan on supporting people that want to keep these on the road for 50 plus years. Nick? Let's talk about those headlights. <laughs> These, these beautiful yes. headlights yeah. are a result of our federal government's regulations and the motorcycle class of vehicles. Uh, they are very pretty, but they are very much so. We have to have illumination to the road in less than 18 inches off the center line. Right. And that means that either we have a very expensive projector that has projector beams you know, all along here, or we concentrate the projectors in the middle. The obvious choice without having $2,000 light set up in the front is to go with the center. Um, is it going to track the degree? Uh, there won't be the need. 150 degrees is red. Amazing efficiency, again, and also um, it's the lightest, smallest, most energy efficient, but also the best performing light. And Without traveling people. Correct. Yeah. We're, and we're going to release those specs. But yeah, it, it's a it's a marvelous thing. We actually, Chris was the, the between he and I. Here's the regulation. He's like, let's break the regulation. Let's redo the regulation. Let's lobby the regulation. The best way is actually like embrace the regulation and then maximize the smart, elegant solution. So we did that. <laughs> um, that was a big worry. Is that you know too much concentration in the middle and kind of kill the whole smile look of the Aptera. Um, Jason likes to call it smirk, not smile. Um, but it's just a beautiful, stunning vehicle. When you see it at night, you know, with this kind of light bar in the front, I mean, I think it will just dazzle people, uh, for sure. Well, that's just awesome. My question is about crash testing. When do you anticipate start crashing these vehicles? Just like that one. Do the first the roof crash test. And uh, part of the question is, will you be crash testing Delta? And will you be still doing it? Uh, yes, as we said before, the previous iterations of the body structure have gone through those kind of crash tests and ESS tests, but this is a whole new thing. Um, and the way we're building this body structure, um, which we'll hopefully announce soon, um, is a very new and unique um, process. Um, and you know, we plan for it to be much stronger uh, than the previous body structure, but we will have to go through all of that testing over again. Um, we hope that that's early next year. Uh, we'll be building those Delta kind of pre-production vehicles and we'll be able to take them to the lab and uh, put them against the wall and have them crushed and do all those sorts of fun things. Uh, thank you. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll paraphrase because a lot of people may not have heard uh, what Nathan was talking about, but Nathan was suggesting, uh, could we start an Aptera program uh, for emergency services, um, i.e. a uh, pre-response to an ambulance coming to your aid? Uh, I think certainly that's a possibility. Um, I, uh, I think we need to get some vehicles on the road and in people's hands first, and then we can build all kinds of uh, very compelling programs that can help the, the, our communities and the world. Um, yeah, for sure. I think the opportunity for the community <coughs> aspect of that, that era, uh, and, and there's many places to go on that, is that we're fundamentally changing the relationship between a product and a person. And uh, our technology, the, the age we live in, we live in the age of infinite knowledge, and technology is our is our is our you know, waypoint. So the, the opportunities for all of that, and again, changing that relationship between vehicle and user, that's what this is about. Uh, that's a good question. That the you know the software is still evolving, but we plan to give you as much information about your battery health as possible. Uh, we don't want to hide that information because we hope that you come and buy new battery packs from us, or because we're you know scared of the feedback that we might get uh, because of our battery's performance. Uh, but we want to show you how your battery pack is performing over its life, 
uh, because you know we want to keep these vehicles on the road as long as possible. And if your first battery pack lasts 12 years, you know, gosh, okay, I can expect my battery, second battery pack to probably last about the same. Uh, but we'll show you basically what every cell in your pack is doing um, and how closely uh, they are performing together. And that's really indicative of the health of your battery pack, how each cell group is performing um, and how close they are in terms of voltage and impedance. And you can basically predict uh, the actual value of your battery pack just from that data. So, so I know uh, efficiency is key, and Betty, this is going to be applicable, but is vehicle to grid ever going to be a possibility? We would love for vehicle to grid to be a real possibility with a solar electric vehicle that's sitting in your driveway and possibly producing more power than you're using. If you get the full solar kit and you're producing 40 miles of power a day, but for three days you don't go anywhere, you want that power to just go to waste. You know, if the, the solar isn't charging the battery pack, it just creates heat and goes nowhere. Um, it would be much better to put that power back to your house or put that power back to the grid. Unfortunately, there is um, no real good standards for that yet. Uh, and there's nobody that's kind of put forth, you know, this is the kind of plug you use, this is the voltage you send back, this is communication protocols. Uh, they have some uh, adopted protocols, like G1772 and some other things, but it hasn't caught on, nobody else is using it, so, you know, we're still kind of in flux on what is the industry going to do, and how can we implement that, uh, but we are planning as soon as possible, um, hopefully before launch, to have some solutions available. It may not come with the vehicle standard, you may have to buy it as an option, uh, but we would very much so love to take power from the vehicle and throw it back to the grid. Two more questions. Two more questions. And then we'll let you guys get, get, get close and check it out. We're not going to um, allow anyone to sit in it today, but you guys can definitely get up close. And just a reminder, you guys, all about the embargo. Um, so please feel free to take photos and videos, but just make sure not to share anything until it happens. So, Sorry, I'm just going to ask you about plan service networks in Sacramento. Yep. Because Middle of Illinois, how do you get service? Uh, the question is uh, a planned service network and how are we going to service this vehicle. Um, you know, one of the great things about having a very modular build and a very simple vehicle uh, that doesn't have any pump lubricants and, you know, uh, you know very durable parts is hopefully the service intervals are very, very low. Uh, if something breaks, hopefully. Um, it's easily fixed by you know, um, supplying a new module to you. Um, in areas where there's lots of order density, San Diego, LA, San Francisco, Austin, Texas, um, Miami, you know, those types of places are easy. We're going to probably have a you know, distri distribution facility there for parts, uh, and we'll have people that run around in lands to help you know, service the Terra. Uh, if you live in the middle of uh, Utah or Wyoming, not be very many other Ontario owners around you. Uh, but what we hope to do is enable a service network through information. And we want to provide you with information on every part of the vehicle that could have issues and put a little QR code on different areas so you can scan, watch a video on maybe how to fix it yourself or when you take the mechanic how they can fix it and ship you a part within 24 hours of your need. Uh, so it's very unusual to embrace this kind of right to repair mentality because nobody else is doing it. But I think. on the road for 50 plus years, you're going to have to help people in the middle of nowhere with their problems. And you don't want people to think that because your window regulator goes out, that they're just going to be without roll down windows for life. No. Call us if it's under warranty, we'll send you the part for free and we'll pay for a local mechanic to fix it for you, or you can fix it yourself. I've got a Tesla, very beautiful vehicle, goes very fast, but even their mobile service network, I live in Southern California, we're going to tons of Teslas. Uh, but, you know, I have a meeting appointment, they have to come to my house, you know, I have to be there at a certain time. It takes them two hours to fix a problem. I'm pretty talented. I could fix that window regulator in like five minutes if they would just send me the part and how to fix it. And then I wouldn't have had it done on somebody else's time schedule and stuff. So I think the right to repair will really give people flexibility that they just haven't seen in any other vehicle brand. Um, and it's akin to, you know, um, showing my belief. Back in the old days, you used to go to the auto zone and find the repair catalog that they had for your vehicle. You could, then you could fix anything. Get a part from AutoZone, you can actually fix your vehicle uh, and keep it on the road. Um, we hope that um, you know that sort of right to repair flexibility uh, makes it so somebody in the middle of Australia or in the middle of Wyoming or you know in Europe can actually buy the Aptera and live with it and be happy knowing that they're going to be on the road for a longer time. So, one last question. So, are you guys 
would offer like a lifetime warranty because if I buy an Antara, I want to definitely make sure it's going to last. If there's a issue in 20 years time, that I can get it fixed and it will break the bank. Um, uh, Janice, our wonderful CFO, would probably have an issue with the lifetime warranty uh, in terms of the liability that uh, that's ever led to the company. Uh, but we will certainly have extended warranties uh, and possibly be able to extend those warranties for a very, very long time. But I, I have no need that on what that to be. One more question. A fun question. Fun question. You've, you've talked about how Sandy has influenced what you're going to build, how you're going to build it, but that's not what we know Sandy for. Okay. When is Sandy going to take one apart? <laughs> when is Sandy going to take an Antero apart? He has earned the right to have one of the very first production vehicles in his facility, and he will rip us um, apart and tell the world about it. And the great thing is we have a little bit of inside knowledge on things that piss him off. <laughs> uh, fasteners and uh, things that pull multiple duty um, are the name of the game, and hopefully he'll have some great Great, great way of putting it, Mike. <laughs> well, actually, uh, the good news is that Monroe and Associates has a, a YouTube presence, and you've all seen me tear or us tear things to pieces and then discuss it. But what you don't know is that Monroe really doesn't make any money at that. Um, it's a good marketing ploy, but it doesn't really do anything for us. What we do mostly, or what the most of the engineers do, is new product development. And it's everything from um, uh, washing machines and refrigerators to uh, barbecues. Uh, and quite frankly, you know, this might not be popular, but you did bring up, hey, what are we going to do for the grid? Um, well, we're working on uh, mobile nuclear reactors right now as well. They're not uranium, don't. <laughs> They're using something called thorium, which is a lot safer. Anyhow, these are liquid salt types of things, so we're working on that. We also have a defense area, blah, blah, blah. We do a lot of different things. And the lucky thing for Aptera is, I've been basically seeing what's going on uh, for quite a while, and our people have helped um, make sure that this is the car. I don't know about an unlimited warranty, but, uh, but I can tell you for sure your maintenance is going to be next to nothing. Uh, so I think, uh, I think that Monroe will probably take one apart and show the world what's going on. Basically to show the world how they should have got the job done. And, uh, and that's, that's what Athera is going to do. Maybe the yeah. right to repair angle. The right to repair, as far as I can tell here, um, these are all modules. So if you have, I'm not gonna speak for Aptera, but if you have a module, it's not that hard to take it apart and put another one on. So, um, and I can tell you for sure, uh, the body is not gonna wear out. So <laughs> if you plowed, a, you take off one of the wheels or something by, uh, you know, misjudging a telephone pole, that's on you, but uh, you'll probably be able to fix it. So, anyhow. Thanks, Andy. Um, I think just to close this up, uh, thanks um, to all of our engineers uh, who have made this possible, uh, to all of our support team. Uh, Pablo's in the back there. Um, he's making all the manufacturing happen. Raise your hand, Pablo. Pablo is the man. That's it. Um, and uh, you know all of our engineers and our build crew to get this vehicle done in a timely manner so we can go to fully charge and show the world what we're about. Um, it's just amazing. All of our ambassadors and supporters, um, it's just amazing to feel uh, the warmth of your connection uh, to our brand. And uh, we just can't thank you enough for sharing our story, for investing in us, for putting down deposits. Um, it's because of you uh, that we've been able to make it so far. Uh, and it will be because of you that we will launch this vehicle in the next year uh, and make the world a more efficient place. So. And Delta is even better than this. So with that, Sarah, anything else? Okay. I think, uh, again, for the, uh, for the solar team, um, it's, uh, it's been just the last couple of days that we finally had a full solar package on a vehicle and have been out in the sun and have been charging our high voltage battery pack. So uh, just an amazing accomplishment. Anusha's team uh, and the Solar Charge team to get everything working 
and it's just very cool to see uh, to see it represented here uh, in totality for the very first time. Uh, so, yes, thanks. Uh, some of you have been very keen on all the details, and we ran into you know uh, the, the creative and engineering process. And by the way, to me, Aptera represents the best of engineering inside and out. It's really a fantastic um, execution and exercise. And again, Delta's going to be better. But you know, where's the couple? Where's the armrest? Where's this and that? Has anybody figured out the HVAC system? Chris said it. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, we were we were holding back because we had to we had to like, file. I go. I'm going to give a brief overview, so I'll tell all the real story. Mm -hmm. We we had to hold back on actually describing it because we were filing a uh, patent. Um, the area, the ring around the main screen is the vent. So the vent is the screen. The screen is the vent, and we match the uh, we actually exceed the required calculations of what the air should be in a cabin of a vehicle this this size. Um, we're going to be able to, or you're going to be able to control the air up, down, left, right. And there will be supplemental side vents. We also have defrost, side defrost, lower vents as well. So that might answer one of those questions. Yeah, the thermal team's done an amazing job. In a typical vehicle, you have to get rid of all that HVAC heat somewhere when you have your air conditioning on. Uh, but we just have our belly fan to uh, 